so very excited to kick off the event with our keynote speaker, Melissa Beneshay. Melissa is a mom, a baker, and the founder of Baked by Melissa. I'm sure many of you know and recognize it, and if you got here early enough, I think there's actually still some uh, delicious cupcakes in the back there. Um, passionate about baking since childhood and with the idea that people should be able to taste more flavors without a post-dessert guilt trip, Melissa decided to do what she loved and launched Bake by Melissa in 2008 after being fired from her job in advertising. Um, today, the company operates 13 stores and ships nationwide. So without further ado, I want to introduce Melissa, Melissa Beneshai. And she will be speaking about how authenticity, great branding, and hard work can be the right ingredients for a startup or product launch. You want to speak? You want to speak? Uh, I guess I'll speak. Do you want to walk around? <laughs> all right. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Megan, so much, and thank you all for having me. Um, I'm going to actually take a seat and be comfortable with everyone this morning. So I'm here to share my story and the story of Baked by Melissa with all of you. I think that it should inspire each of you to go after your dreams and give you the confidence to do anything you set your mind to. Uh, it's a truly magical story and we've been utilizing PR and marketing since inception. So. I was working at Deutsch Advertising in June of 2008. I wasn't very passionate about the work I was doing, and I guess it showed because on a Wednesday morning at 11 a.m., I was called to HR over the loudspeaker. I thought I was getting a promotion, but I was fired. They told me to go back to my cubicle and pack up my personal belongings. So I did, I went back and I realized I didn't need anything. I picked up the phone and I called my big brother. He's my best friend in the world, also an entrepreneur. I always wanted to start a business with him. He had actually just moved into his very first office in Manhattan on 38th and 8th. He and our childhood friend Matt started an interactive agency called Musebox Media. They were building websites for people. So I grabbed my roll, I called Brian, I was crying. And I said, as soon as he picked up, I said, I was fired. And he said, don't worry, it's the best thing that ever happened to you. Without hesitation, the great big brother that he is, he said, come to my office. So I grabbed my Rolodex and I went up to their office on 38th and 8th. And they were trying to make me feel better. We were hanging out in their brand new office. And, you know, he's an entrepreneur. We were always trying to think of new business ideas together. He said, I got it. Go home, bake your cupcakes. We'll start a business out of it. A little background about that, I love cupcakes and I had been baking them for everyone and anyone. If it was your birthday and I loved you and I love a ton of people, I baked you my tie-dye cupcakes specifically because I love the Grateful Dead and the carefree culture of the 60s and 70s. These tie-dye cupcakes were big at the time, bright, beautiful, and delicious. So it wasn't crazy that he said, go home, bake your cupcakes. I think it was crazy that I actually did because I had just gotten fired arguably like the worst thing that ever happened to me, but I knew I needed to take control of the way that I felt, so I stopped at the Food Emporium in Murray Hill on my way back to my apartment and tried to think of some other flavors I could create, which is where I decided s'mores, cookie dough, peanut butter cup would be great compliments to the tie-dye. And that's it, I went home, I baked like 200 cupcakes, four batches of big cupcakes the night I was fired from my job. My best friend's little sister, Carly, was actually staying with me for the summer in my small Murray Hill apartment with all the fake walls, um, sharing my bed with me, interning at Alice and Broad PR. At the time, the company was called Alice and Broad PR, now it's called Alice and Broad Media Communications. Um, I, I said, you know what, Carly, I have all these cupcakes, why don't you bring them into work with you next the, uh, tomorrow? Allison, you know, her office was known for like having all of these girls who wear heels and and I, all girls love cupcakes, I thought it would be great, but obviously in the back of my mind, I was hoping that Alison Broad would try them. I loved her, she's like a myth, a legend. I had seen her on reality TV shows, she's a female who started her own business. I thought, if I could get her to taste these cupcakes, who knows? So sure enough, the next day, Carly brings the cupcakes into work, Alison tries them. She's, she's real, she was at work, she ate too, I couldn't believe it. Carly's texting me like crazy, like, oh my God, everyone's obsessed with your cupcakes. Alison Broad 
loves them. She wants to put you in touch with her caterer. I couldn't believe it. I freaked out. I think I cried happy tears, actually. I know I did. I remember. And the story could have ended there, and I, it would have been great. Allison Broad tried my cupcakes and loved them. But sure enough, a couple of hours later, still the day after I lost my job, I get a, a phone call from, from Ben Zion, her caterer. Hello, Melissa. This is Ben Zion. I'd like to bring you to my house for a tasting. Holy crap. I got a tasting with Allison Broad's caterer. I hung up the phone. I ran back to my brother's office. Like, out of breath, I... Guys, I got a tasting with Allison Broad's caterer. We have to go in there like we have a business already and he could be a part of it. Otherwise, what are we going to get from this opportunity? They're like, done, totally. What do we need? We need a name and a logo. So right then and there, I, I really wanted to call the company Baked, but my brother insisted that it have a personal tie. Yeah. Um, he said, why do you know and love Allison Broad so much? Because her name is in the name of the company. If it wasn't, you wouldn't even know she existed. Totally the truth. So we settled on Baked by Melissa. Could not have been more perfect, literally in minutes. And while we were having that conversation, Matt, his business partner, our childhood best friend, who knew me very well, turned his monitor around. He said, what do you think of this as the logo? And it's the same exact logo that we have today. It could not have been more beautiful. And again, I, I'm a happy crier, so I cried when I saw it. So that was it. Now we had everything we needed to go to the tasting with Allison Broad's caterer. I went home. I stopped at the Clover Deli in Murray Hill on my way home from their office. I used to go there every day and buy two big cupcakes on my way home from work because I love cupcakes and I can never decide between chocolate and vanilla. And then I would wind up eating both of them. So the owners of the deli knew me. And like for those of you who live in in Manhattan, that's like a New York moment when you know your like bodega guys know you by name. So I walk in and they're like, hey Melissa. I'm like, hey guys. They're like, what are you, what do you, what cupcakes do you want today? No cupcakes, just empty boxes. Can I have like three extra, three flat pastry boxes? They said, sure. I literally printed out the logo on computer paper and glued it to the top of the boxes. I decided to make the cupcakes mini size without paper and the look basically was the same as they look today for the tasting with the caterer. I went to his apartment. He tried each flavor. He loved them. He said, great. From a catering perspective, people love just the bite. I don't know if that exists, but if you could figure it out, oh my God, quote, that's exactly what he said. So I was like, shit, like, this is it. This is my chance to do what I love every day. I'm obsessed with cupcakes, and if I could do that, oh my God. So I combed the streets of New York, city of dreams. You could, you could get anything you need here. And I asked strangers on the street, like, hi, do you know where a baking supply store is? Didn't even know baking supply stores existed, but they do, and there are a ton of them. Uh, I found a temporary solution to make them just a bite, bake them, brought them back to the caterer. He loved them. He said, great, I'm doing an event at the Javiana showroom on Spring Street. Next week, bake me 250 cupcakes and, and uh, wear a black dress. So I was like, okay, weird, but sure, this is a great opportunity. So I did that, and in that week that I had between the tasting and the first event, my brother and Matt created a website for the company, bakedbymelissa.com, where you could go online and order 100 or more cupcakes to be delivered by me from my apartment using the subways, but nobody knew that. It used PayPal. We shot all the images for the website on my IKEA coffee table with a white bed sheet and, and just the cupcakes on the white bed sheet. That was a great white background. And got business cards printed very quickly, like Baked by Melissa logo, my name, my cell phone number, my home address. 300 East 34th Street, apartment 27G. My parents were not happy. Um, but there you have it. Now all of a sudden we have a company. And when I went to that first event, we displayed the cupcakes in this beautiful like jewelry box and people were freaking out. Who would have thought this amazing dessert that everyone already knows and loves, but cute, like just a bite. And you could try every flavor. So... Um, people were coming, eating the cupcakes, taking a business card, which would direct them to the website, and that's how I started getting my very first business. Through PR, essentially, Allison Broad, who introduced me to her caterer, who had all these amazing clients. We had all this great word of mouth marketing at every single event that we did. And on days that I didn't have orders to fill that summer, I would cold call catering companies that didn't have in-house pastry chefs and go on any tasting. If somebody said they knew someone who could use them for an event, I went. And I, when I cold called, I would say, hi, this is Melissa from Baked by Melissa. I'd like to bring you a free tasting of my cupcakes. And I remember feeling like such a fraud, actually crying to my brother, like, who the hell do I think I am? Melissa of Baked by Melissa. But I am. He, you are. I'm sitting on my bed 
in my little tiny bedroom, like on my cell phone, and they picture me in a bakery. But hey, you know what? It worked. And one day, I actually went on a tasting to Cafe Barry, which was a cafe on Broadway and Spring Street in Soho. I remember I was like wearing my baggy Syracuse sweatpants, batter all over me, walking into this cafe where like that neighborhood in Soho, everyone's gorgeous. They all look like actors and models. I felt very out of place. This handsome guy walks down the stairs of Cafe Barry. His name is Danny. He's the owner. He, I open the little like clamshell of cupcakes. He pops the tie-dye cupcake in his mouth. He looks at me. He says, I love you. I'm storing you in my phone as cupcake, and we'll be in touch. I said, great, bye. And I went home, and I continued baking. And I guess like two weeks passed. I get a call from an identified number. I pick up. Hey, cupcake, it's Danny Omari from Cafe Barry. I have an idea. Let me know what you think. Every holiday season, I, I get a booth at the holiday market in Union Square. It's a six-week period of time. Artisanal brands come in. I usually sell soup and hot cocoa. It does okay, but I think that your cupcakes could make a killing. I also have some extra space here in my kitchen at Cafe Barry. It's, it's used for prep. Why don't you move all of your stuff into my kitchen space at Cafe Barry, sell me your product at cost, and I'll brand the booth baked by Melissa. I'll sell it. I'll do everything. You just have to bake the product and, and sell it to me. I was like, oh, okay. Um, let me call my brother. I'm like 24 years old. Never, like, I was a, a sales assistant at, at an advertising agency before. So we went. We checked out the kitchen. It was amazing, huge, very overwhelming. I remember crying because I was overwhelmed. But, you know, everyone's had that moment where you cry on the streets of Manhattan and you don't want anyone to see you. And I just remember feeling like, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm just overwhelmed. I didn't know. Um, so sure enough, on November 26th, 2008, seven months after I started baking out of my apartment, my dad drove in from Bergen County, New Jersey, and helped me pack up my little tiny kitchen. We brought everything to Cafe Barry. That's actually the day that I discovered Restaurant Depot, which is where you could get ingredients in bulk. Amazing. We hired our first employee. His name was Tony. He was like a stripper by night. Um, he had a single with Snoop Dogg, and the two of us baked 15, 16 hours a day, seven days a week for the six-week period that the holiday market was open. And that was great PR for us. We, we break rules at Baked by Melissa, always have. So those holiday markets are like red and white striped, while ours was wallpapered with the photos that we took on my, my Ikea coffee table, all just like walls of cupcakes. Um, and we actually had like Naomi Watts and Liev Schreiber come and taste the cupcakes and love them. First celebrity customers during that six week period of time. We sold out in the holiday market every single day. I was just baking and baking and baking and they would come and take them to the holiday market. We wound up opening in Bryant Park and Columbus Circles holiday market in that short period of time. And, and then it was over. Six weeks, holiday market's end. We knew we had this unbelievable opportunity that we had to take advantage of. So in True Baked, we had a product that people love, and that is just a really amazing thing. Everyone wants that. So in True Baked by Melissa Fashion, we decided to open a bite size, if you will, pickup window on the corner of Spring and Broadway. It was actually attached to Cafe Barry. They used it during the summer sometimes to, to sell smoothies. So it's opening day, March 5th, 2009. I'm 24 years old, freaking out. Like, who's going to stop at this hole in the wall and buy cupcakes they've never heard of before? But this little online newsletter that maybe some of you have heard of before and at the time was the biggest, called Daily Candy. I think it was the only online newsletter. They would send out a weekend guide. Every Thursday night, we opened on a Friday. So, and... <laughs> And my wonderful co-founder, Ben, is a PR genius. And I think he, like, stalked the editor, Jarlyn Gerba, for, like, the days leading up to it, giving her cupcakes, trying to get her to include us in their weekend guide. Well, she did. So the day before we opened our store, we were included in Daily Candy's weekend guide, which was, like, where to eat, where to shop, where to go, where to whatever. And the where to eat was the Baked by Melissa hole in the wall in Soho. Pickup window, sorry. And um, opening day, I'm freaking out, like, who's going to come buy these cupcakes they've never heard of before? David Z, who owns all of these shoe stores in Manhattan, um, entrepreneur, namesake of his brand, 
was sitting next to me at the bar, like while I'm freaking out. I had never met him before, but somebody had told me who he was. He was a regular at the cafe, and I was starstruck because here's a guy who who achieved basically what I was about to try to do. Um, he's a real character, takes it too far sometimes. He looks at the bartender of the cafe who I've never met before. Also, he says, Adi, who is this beautiful girl? The bartender looks me up and down and he says, that's my wife. And that's how I met my husband. I, at first I thought he was such a douche, but, <laughs> you know, he's the best ever. Um, and so opening day, I met my husband, couldn't believe it, but I was really just a bartender at the time. People start lining up around the corner. I couldn't believe it. I have a vivid memory just like peeking out of the window like, holy shit. My parents came. Like everyone's like running cupcakes up and down the stairs, doing everything we could to just fill all the otters. That's how Baked by Melissa was born. Um, Ben, my co-founder, PR genius, brought the cupcakes everywhere and anywhere. Because that's what you need to do to get the word out, right? So if you were at a club from 2009 to 2011, there's like a 56% chance you saw Baked by Melissa Cupcakes there because he brought them. We had the Kardashians eating our product in the green room of the launch of their like Target clothing lines. We did the launch of their new Boutique Dash in Soho. Justin Bieber tried our cupcakes. All of this PR and press that we got made us cool and relevant and it made other people want to try our product. So. The PR that we got very early on really shaped our brand and our company. And what we've learned since then is that PR does amazing things in marketing, of course, like does amazing things for your company. And over the past nine years since we've started, PR has evolved. So first it was Daily Candy, that online newsletter. And of course, we would do a ton of events and we were fortunate to have celebrities who just loved our cupcakes, and, you know, were photographed like just like us and Us Weekly, things like that. Um, what else did we do? We, we were all um, in magazines and print, but now PR is different, right? So now I'm doing Facebook Lives and there are all those tasty videos of just your hands. We did a video the other day that got like 2.1 million views and that's like the best thing that could happen for, for us from a PR perspective. But really PR and the evolution of, of the industry is what motivates me every day to create new. And it's really what drives our company to continue to do new and different things and tell new stories. We launched bite-sized stuffed macarons. It gives us something else to talk about. I'm constantly working on new flavors. We have a mini of the month that changes every month. We have a seasonal collection. Every season, we launch three new flavors of cupcakes. We're, we're constantly doing new and different things. I just wrote a book called Cakes by Melissa. We've done so much PR around that, and that's why we did it, is so we could have new stories to tell, and because it's amazing, and I wanted to share all of my unbelievable recipes and story with you and inspire you to do anything and everything you set your mind to. Now we work with influencers on Instagram all the time. We actually, um, so I know it was mentioned earlier, but the state of the world right now is a little more challenging that, than it was maybe like a year ago or two years ago. And um, after everything happened in Virginia um, in September, I'm like laying in bed, my CEO calls me, who's like the most amazing guy in the world, and he's like, I'm really upset about everything that's happening, about Trump's remarks. It's not okay, I wanna do something. And I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm pacing on my balcony thinking, what can I do to affect change? And I got it. Let's give away a million cupcakes to inspire random acts of kindness across the country. I was like, great, I love it. We like, it was literally like 10 o'clock at night, we called our team on conference, like each one individually, like, we have an idea, what do you think? We're gonna give away a million cupcakes. Turned out we wound up giving away 150,000 cupcakes because that was what was in the best interest of the business, but we did it. And literally in 36 hours, this idea that came from frustration and challenge turned into this beautiful event. It was a campaign that we called Side With Love and we put together our online newsletter and our social media posts, and we used this amazing, amazing peace sign image of my hand from Cakes by Melissa, and we sent our message out there. We want to inspire you to send 25 cupcakes to someone you care about to make them happy. That's what the world needs right now. And it was met with such positivity and appreciation. We went through 150,000 cupcakes 
in less than a day. We had thousands of people waiting online on our website to, um, to take part in this amazing thing. And really, like, that's what it's all about today. We're constantly coming up with new stories and new things to do that really get our brand across. Like, I think having me, Melissa, you know, as the face of the brand is definitely something that helps to authenticity and, and being genuine are the only things that matter to me. And I think that's such a good balance when you're in a business. And obviously the goal is to continue to grow and sell more product and, and increase revenue. Um, but really, Baked by Melissa exists because I love cupcakes. And I took arguably like the most challenging day. You know, I got fired from my job and I saw, as an, I saw it as an opportunity to do what I love. And really that outlook on life is, is the culture of Baked by Melissa. We know that when we are feeling frustrated, we have to capture that fleeting thought and see it as an opportunity to find a solution and to shine as an individual. And it's that outlook on life that has shaped Baked by Melissa and will allow us to continue to grow the company. So that's the story of Baked by Melissa. Um, just about the campaign that you just told us about, I was wondering, um, how would you budget for something like that? Did you just put a cap on how many cupcakes you give away for free? And then you said less than a day, so you just have to cut it off at a cap? Yeah, so it's, it's a great question, and I think I get questions like that all the time. And it's very important to know your margin and, and how much you can afford to spend on things. For that campaign specifically, it was about product, right? How much can we afford to give away? And that's, we actually settled on 100,000 cupcakes, but it did so well, and people were like, wanted them, so we upped it to 150,000 cupcakes. And that's really all we spent, you know, product and shipping, and um, we, we used our own channels to get the message out. Social media, of course, is a huge channel for us and something we use all the time. Um, but we, we try to balance the like data and analytical side with our gut and just being awesome. And you know what? If we spent the time to really think it through entirely, we would have lost the opportunity because that was a very much a now thing. Like, this is what's happening in the world. This is how we want to respond. We just did, we literally, it was the most beautiful thing to watch our team like come together and work their asses off and just get everything done. And that's really what we were focusing on. Um, I was just wondering if you wouldn't mind talking about what you do currently for PR, like what your PR strategy is now. Sure. Um, well, so Cakes by Melissa was launched on October 3rd. And so for the past two weeks, our PR has been amazing. We have a wonderful PR manager who works in-house for Baked by Melissa, and he's amazing. He has great experience. He's right there. His name is Matt. And Matt has booked me solid doing all of these different, like everything from Facebook Lives to interviews for like print, like um, I'm going to be in the December issue of Oprah Magazine, podcasts, um, I'm very tired, and and um, we did our first event to celebrate the launch of Cakes by Melissa, which was very much outside of my comfort zone. And then on a normal basis, we use social media a ton to message new product and show the behind the scenes of Baked by Melissa. We're constantly pitching new stories and coming up with new stories. One thing that I like to do is create new product to give Matt something to pitch, and we work together on that. And he all, and then he works to pitch me, and and like the story is very inspiring. And I like to share it because I like to show people that they can do anything they set their mind to. Um, but it's all about just brainstorming and coming up with new. We have um, BCRF, so October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I came up with a pink sugar cookie macaron and a pink cotton candy double stuff. Pink sugar cookie cupcake and uh, pink cotton candy macaron. 
10% of all sales were donating to Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Every pink box, gift box that we sell through bakedbymelissa.com or any one of our stores, we donate $5 to breast cancer. So we do fun things that are also good. I uh, came up with ice cream. Uh, we worked with Ample Hills to put tie-dye cupcakes in ice cream. We called it the summer of love. It was amazing. And that's what it's about. Like, you know, that's why it's so important to surround yourself with like-minded, hardworking, passionate individuals who actually want to work hard. Because when you find those people, you can do anything. Like, I definitely don't do this on my own. I've had an unbelievable team of people since day one. And that's what it's all about. We're like creating together. And then when we create new, we have these unbelievable stories to tell. Good morning. My question is um, related to authenticity. And as you now kind of going from, you know, a person who had um, just your privacy to now a mom and a role model for women, how do you feel like authenticity plays into that or this new role that you're in? I think it's really important to know your strengths and weaknesses, more importantly your weaknesses, but I think one of my strengths is just like I'm real. And I think I've allowed that to, like I all I wanna do is inspire other people and show them that they could do anything. Um, as far as privacy goes, like we, like when my daughter was born, my husband and I were like, I don't know, like should we take pictures of her for the Baked by Melissa Instagram, things like that. We decided every now and then it's fine. Um, I think as long as I'm being true to myself and doing what makes me feel good, then that's my version of authenticity. I think women are amazing. Women can do anything men can do, but more because we could have babies. Um, I like true. Um, true. Yeah, and I think that I I feel very fortunate to be in a position to represent a brand that sells a product that I created because it's given me the, uh, it's been very humbling and you know, I kind of, it's my job to lead by example. It's, we should all lead by example and we should all embody the person that we wanna be. And I think that because I do it so regularly facing the public, it's taught me that really like, you can be whatever you wanna be, you just have to be it, you know? Nice, thank you. Are you ever concerned about getting roped into a crisis or fake news or, you know, as the founder and leader of a company, is that something you think about in today's media and environment? And do you have any advice for the people in the room about how to, uh, those who are representing owners and leaders of companies and CEOs, how to uh, make sure that you avoid getting roped into a controversy? I, I actually don't think about that. I, but in general, my outlook on life is just to focus on what I can control um, because shit's going to happen that I can't control. It happens every single day. And the biggest thing is just my response. And that's the only thing I can control is my response to the things that are happening to me. And I actually think that's what shapes your character. So as a company, that's our outlook on it too. And if something like fake news were to get us, then we would respond in a way that's true to our character. And I bet we would use it as an opportunity to shine because that's who we are at Baked by Melissa. We really see every challenge as an opportunity. I will say along the lines of like Facebook Live and content in general, there is so much, it's actually insane. And I have learned that, you know what? Everyone's just trying to figure it out, like everyone. Um, I went to Food and Wine yesterday and I did a Facebook Live in this test kitchen that they created for Facebook Lives. You know, I don't know. I don't, like, we'll see. Um, and and I, I'm doing a lot of them. I don't, I don't know. Like, since the book launched, we've done a ton of press and it's so interesting because it 100% affects our revenue. We've seen spikes every single day that I'm out there promoting cakes by Melissa and baked by Melissa or every time we get press for product. And it's really just about how we can do more of that and, and trying everything. We, like, there, I went through, I, I try and say yes to everything because I know that even if it's not 
what we hope for, we're going to learn and we're going to take something for it. And that's ultimately how we get our PR strategy, by doing everything, trying whatever is out there that's new, that's obviously allows us to be our authentic self and learning from it. Hi, thank you so much. Um, very inspiring. I am a fan of Bake by Melissa. Actually, my girlfriends and I had a bake off, Yay. like a cupcake bake off. Like we got like really how, like- How did we do? You guys, you came in first. Oh my God. So I just, again, oh. as a fan, oh. we had this whole thing. Again, Excel spreadsheet. I probably should show it to you because we were like- Oh serious. my gosh, that's so nice. We were really Do you know how hard it. it is too? Because they're just a bite it and was, there's no paper keeping them. It was so difficult because we had all these categories that we set for ourselves, but you you want so I obviously you. like testament thank and you're you so great so thank that, you that's like what's your personal. favorite flavor so i like the tie-dye i mean let's like not come on original do you classic. know we have a new tie-dye flavor now i did not and i didn't know so the... it's called electric tie-dye okay and so there's a whole tutorial for electric tie-dye in the back can in I the get, book like how can there we, should be i think how can i there, how can we make there this should happen? be i'm i gotta i gotta get you some tie-dye I, mean, I literally it's like a joy to my life we're gonna find you some i love it so my question, aside from being a fan, I just had like my fan moment, electric tie, I can't even. How can I get this it's, on the... It's, I mean... I, I can't. So my real question for you is, what role does technology play in the Bake by Melissa brand? I'm just curious with like virtual reality, augmented reality, do you, like is there going to be like virtual cupcakes or like a virtual you or like can I like take you to work with me if I can't like take you to work you with me? You can take me to work with you. I just really I like you. I love it. I would like really love it. But like what role or do you see like because you're very true to your brand. You keep coming back to the brand. Technology is changing all the time. It's, it's such a great question. It's actually something that my CEO and I talk about all the time. It's about finding a balance. So we are like I love my job and and my CEO loves his job equally, and we have so much fun together. So <laughs> one day, we went to our store in Garden State Plaza Mall in New Jersey, and we were you know, walking around, going into stores that inspire us. And we went into the Lego store, and we went into the Disney store, two brands that really inspire my creativity. And they both had technological aspects of the store that were broken. Mm. And it was something that I pointed out to him, because it's very important to be on the forefront of technology. Almost 40% of our business is through our website. Right. And, and making the checkout process as convenient as possible for our customers is our topmost priority right now, along with like maybe two or three others. But um, it's a balance. You know, like we're working on building out new stores and we talk about it all the time. What role do we want technology to have? We want a customer to be able to walk into a store and place an order very conveniently to be shipped or picked up or delivered because we do all of those things, just in case you didn't know. Um, <laughs> and and um, I'm, I'm actually very interested to, to see how the next few months and the next store build outs play out to see how we we do decide to utilize techno technology because it is about a balance in my opinion. And technology is only great when it works. That's the truth. Well, we should talk. I know a couple of things about technology because I work at the world's largest technology company. So we probably should have like, just pick your brain and I'll bring the the please bring the electric tie dye cupcakes. You got it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, thank you for your note, keynote, and thank you for the cupcakes. I taste one, I never thought that chocolate and cinnamon work so well. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm a marketing student, and my question is, uh, like, uh, I think for food industry is kind of a mature industry, and like, there are a lot of uh, cupcake stores already exist. So how did you find your, like, your creative idea of making so like creative and mini cupcakes, and how did you get find your uh, competitive advantage among the uh, mature industry, yeah. So the first question is, how did we get the product? And then the second is the competitive advantage. So the, the product was, I can't take credit for deciding to make them just a bite. Somebody mentioned it to me and I was like, yes, that's awesome. I eat two big cupcakes every day because I can't decide between the flavors. So now you, you know, we made them small. You could try them all. Everything is under 50 calories at Baked by Melissa. So you could have five cupcakes for 250 calories. It's crazy. Um, and you know, when we started the company, 
we were the first of our kind, right? Like boutique dessert places really didn't exist yet. It was 2008. People ate that shit up, literally. Like, like, and now there are a ton of other boutique dessert and food concepts popping up every single day. And I think it's, it's tough. It's, it's a really tough time for food in general because nothing is more popular than doing what we did nine years ago. I think that I've been fortunate to build a team, a brand and a company with this unbelievable team of people. So now we're at this point where I know we're going to we're gonna, we are no, we're not a trend. We are a staple of the New York area. Bite-sized cupcakes make sense. They should all be that size. What's the definition of a cupcake? It's your own personal cake that you can enjoy by yourself. Well, we give you the opportunity to try more. It's like it's amazing. Um, so I, I definitely think the product is super important and I think like it's not easy to create a product that everyone either needs or wants, but once you do, you own it and you run with it. We did bite-sized stuffed cupcakes for the first seven years we were in business. That's it. We had eight to ten flavor or eight to twelve flavors available at any given time. And now, you know, after we've really established our brands and products, we start to um, branch out, like the ice cream, which was unbelievable. We love partnerships. Partnerships in general, I think, are, are very in right now. And it's a great way to increase awareness and work with another company in your space or in another space that gives you, um, you know, that shows people who you are that might not have seen you, but they're buying the product that you're partnering with. One more question. <laughs> Just one quick one. Stephanie okay. Scott, first and last PR. Okay. One thing that I loved about hearing your story, Melissa, was how you just went out and did everything. You went to the bakers, you went, you like did stuff. You took your product to people, your team. <laughs> no, but also I'm wearing sneakers. You're wearing sneakers. I love that too. I, I was earlier. Because you've got to do shit. Yeah. I think that in today's world, we as PR practitioners, whatever we're doing, we find different things. So being an entrepreneur, being a woman, entrepreneur is very popular now. But I find that we have clients that are either like you, doing things, and like we're part of that team, we're all doing it. Or there's like an old school mentality where they say, oh, I've got a PR person or a team, so they can go do it. What advice do you have from a business perspective for how we can work with clients to motivate them more to be active? Because in today's media, you have to be constantly creating and creating news and creating buzz. So what would you give to us that we can share with them for more active yeah. I think I gave it to you. I think it's the story. I, I've learned that sharing experiences is the best way to teach and learn. So maybe it's just about showing them success from other businesses that CP, I mean, PR and, and marketing is everything, yeah. right? Like that's the way you acquire new customers and get people to experience your brand for the first time. And without that, you can't grow. And, and sharing very specific like case studies or like the story that I shared with you, like I'm very much, I, I am Matt's biggest asset, right? Like, and, and when I met him, I loved him so much because he knew that, yeah. you know? And, and we're gonna work together mm -hmm. and, and to, to make shit happen. And really like, nobody does anything alone. Like I would say go after clients that like to work with you because that's really how you make a difference and, and create magic. So we should ask them if they wear sneakers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great idea. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.